Hey guys, and in this tutorial we are finally going to look at something known as polymorphism. So you may have heard the uh, word polymorphism applied to object-oriented programming in the past. Now what it actually is, is um, the programming languages support for virtual functions. So polymorphism means um, something that can appear in multiple forms, hence the name polymorph. Ism. So basically, uh, calling a virtual function will produce different results for you depending on what kind of object it is being called on. And just as a side note from last time, in order for a virtual function to work, um, it must be exactly the same as the function that it is replacing from the base class. It must have uh, the same return type, same arguments list, and you can't just say declare one as constant and the other not. So it has to be exactly the same for the virtual function mechanism to work. Now, if you also, if you wanted to just call, um, so let's just make a B object, not uh, initialize it in any way, just use the default constructor. So if you say wanted uh, instead of call to instead of call the B version of calc value, um, to, but to call the A version, you would have to go obj. Dot, you would have to use the scope resolution operator. So you actually have to state explicitly that it is the version from A. Obviously, it doesn't work here because calc value is a protected uh, function. So let's just get rid of all of that. So today I'm going to be doing some polymorphism with you guys. So we're going to apply what we learned about base class pointers and we're going to combine it with the idea of virtual functions. So as you can imagine, using both of those together opens up a world of possibilities because um, you don't actually need to know what kind of an object it's going to be before you compile the program. So say you wanted it to make uh, like an object of type B, only if a certain parameter is triggered, but you don't know if it's going to be triggered. So that's where all of this comes in. So we're going to make an A pointer. We're going to call it object and set it to null pointer, like so. And then now we're going to make a switch. Actually, first we're going to see out. Uh, please, choo choo wow, so spelling. Please choose um, the object you would like to create. So this simulates um, basically um, the parameter being triggered because um, you know the user could choose to either make an object of type A or B, so that simulates a parameter or an event being triggered. Now we have our switch. Actually, wait, no, I did not think this through. Um, we need int choice, if I can spell it properly, like so. And now cn choice now we have our switch choice actually no once again I did not think this through um, actually we need to give them a list of suggestions I'm gonna just tap that out give it some space um, choice one uh, object of class a and choice two object of class B. And now we have C out again. Enter your selection now. 
And this is actually where we put that C in statement, right under here. Just under there. Oh crap. Tap that in. There we go. We now have the block of input and output and switch choice case one. Um, we are going to make obj equals new um, a. Oh wait, no. First, let's see out. Enter the values for x. And we're going to need two more integers, int x and int y. Now, c in x, c out, and I'll enter value for y. C in y. Now let's just copy paste for the next one. And now we are going to make object into a, an object of type A. Equals new A. Um, X and Y. And we're going to call print value on this object. Case two. There we go. Same thing, except we're going to make it an object of type B. And once again, call print value. And let's make default. See how it invalid oh wow uh, input and there we go there's a switch all nice and done so basically this uh, simulates like I said and I an event being triggered or something like that they have a choice of creating an object of type a or B and then uh, so we don't actually know what uh, type of print value is going to be called because they could either make uh, an object of type A or B, but whatever they choose, it will uh, call the correct function. So it has multiple forms or polymorphism. So this is polymorphism. Let's give us, uh, let's give you guys all a demonstration. Let's build the project. Go, build succeeded. And here we go. Well, that looks really ugly, but uh, still, it um, does its job. So let's make an object of type B and 2 and 3. And it gives the correct output. It gives us an output of 5. Oh crap, I forgot to break it. Ah, oh, yeah, sorry about that. Got to break these. My bad. Never do that. It gives you very unpredictable output. Do not want, and you do not want that. So, yep. Do as I say, not as I do. So now we know that provides the correct output for B. Now we're going to see if it provides the correct output for A. So we're going to enter one. Uh, once again, 2 and 3, and it gives us 6. Awesome. So this is polymorphism, everyone. And also, one last thing before I go. Um, using virtual functions and these base class, using these base class pointers um, does sometimes give you problems with destructors because, um, because it's a pointer of um, the base class and the destructor uses uh, static linkage or early binding 
which, like I've explained before, determines what which function gets called before uh, the program runs. Um, it will always only call the actual base class destructor, uh, not the inher not the um, inherited class uh, destructors. Uh, which means that uh, often you'll be left with bits of object that haven't been properly uh, destructed or deconstructed and yeah that can lead to problems obviously in this case because B doesn't add anything to the object that doesn't really matter but um, what, what you want to do is take your destructor for A make a destructor real quick and you're going to mark it as virtual. Now, which means the destructor, uh, now, which means the destructor now uses dynamic linkage, which means everything will get destructed properly. Yay! So, yeah, everyone, uh, that concludes the video. And if you enjoyed this video, please uh, subscribe, rate, and if if you have any comments, feedback, or suggestions, please feel free to leave them below in the comments section. I'll try to reply to comments more often now. And thank you all for watching.